Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger. I'm an artist sculptor and I'm going to show you today how to make a mushroom fairy house. These are what I call magical mushrooms. I don't know um, if that's the correct term, but it's what I call the magical mushrooms because they have a pointed um, cap, mushroom cap, at, that comes into a little twisty at the top. So uh, this one is I made a while back, and I actually made I've made a few of them. I like they're really fun to make. This one here, this one's in my shop now. Um, I just posted it yesterday, I think, and it has uh, a patio and a staircase. It's got these little entryway uh, like things going into, so you can walk into the patio. The the gate sort of opens there. You can walk in and uh this is it's pretty cool so i got that one i made this one a while back i believe this one might be in my shop also um this uh is it's got a little staircase going up to the door it's got a little doorknob on the door um and this is done in the vertigree finish that i have and i'm actually gonna put the playlist that i have for a number of really cool finishes like this um, in the video description so there'll be a link to that playlist it has like four finishes how to do stone how to do bronze and a couple of others so you might want to check that out and this is another one I made this one uh, if you watch my videos you know I do a lot of sculpting on earth elements this one I sculpted uh, the little magical mushroom and a, a little fairy house on a rock and you can see that's pretty cool and uh so we'll get started it's really fun so i'm gonna i'm gonna start off with a piece of clay now i work in black clay the reason why i do is because the finishes that i do really pop on the black clay if they, if i worked in another color clay or if i worked in white clay or something like that then i would have to paint it black and i just don't want to get into that when I'm done here, I'll show you how I do um, one of my finishes, and it's just really, really pretty, and you'll see why why uh, I use black clay. And uh, and also, I'm working in Sculpey 3. I don't need that much clay, so let's just take a little ball here, about this size. I'm making a ball. I'm rolling it between the palms of my hands. It's kind of like the the do it, starting with a ball. is It's like the starting point for this technique that I teach which is called simple shapes where you uh, form simple sh shapes in clay and uh, assemble them to form figures or whatever. So once we have a ball what we're going to do is we're going to hold our hands and the ball between it uh, be between our hands we're going to hold it at an angle like this like it like an upside down V. And you can see what's happening is it's creating a cone shape like that. I'm going to keep rolling. Like that. It's getting longer and sharper. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down on the table because I want to keep it, I want to make sure it's going to stay uniform as I roll it and I'm just applying gentle pressure and I'm rolling slowly going up to the top and it's getting longer and skinnier like that and I want the I want that to be a little bit more pointier I'm just going to roll the end a little bit, and now it's it's pretty sharp. It's like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and my forefinger like this in a pinching motion. I'm going to run my finger up the mushroom cap a little ways, and then I'm going to pinch. And the reason why I do that is because what I'm trying to do is I want to spread out the bottom and, and flatten it. 
but I want to try to keep the mushroom cap going up uniform. So if I squished down here, if I was squeezing down here, it would push it in and there would be a bulge here if I didn't do it this way. So and we just go around squeezing and going just going around. And so the bottom is starting to look like that. Where it's not round, you can squeeze a little harder and you can kind of form it out to become a little bit more round and uniform on the bottom. And that's basically what it should look like. You can smooth it, you can smooth the edge if you want. Although it is a mushroom cap, so it's not you know, it can look a little bit ripply or whatever would be fine too. As far as the point goes, um, you can just slowly uh, kind of curve it down and just slowly uh, spiral it like that. And there aren't any particular rules about this. So I'm just going to pull that away a little bit. And I'm going to probably leave it close to that right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back. Because I like there to be some movement. And, you know, kind of naturally uh, flowing. So... You know, bringing it back that way kind of makes it kind of neat looking by doing it that way. So, so that's that. Next, I'm going to make the, uh, the uh, main part of the house. So I need a ball of clay. I'm going to start with something about this big. I think it should work for me. And I'm going to roll it into a ball. Remember, that's a starting point. You know, part of the reason why I do this is it just gets all the little imperfections out of the surface. Um, a lot of times when I make something, I don't have to go back and do any smoothing, you know, finishing on it. Because it's already quite smooth. And part of the reason why is because I start off with a ball that is very smooth. Doesn't have any cracks or crevices or fissures in it. So I get a ball like that. Now I'm going to roll it between the palms of my hands, going to and fro until I get it to the basic thickness that I want. I don't want it to be too much skinnier than that. Now I'm going to flatten the bottom similar to the same way I did the, the uh, cap, the mushroom cap, just doing going around, pinching with my finger going up the stalk. This is the stalk, mushroom stalk. And then I'm going to kind of flatten the top a little bit. So it's because that's going to join the cap. So I want that to be fairly flat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wire because reinforced with re reinforcement with wire is really a good idea on a piece like this. This is a uh, 16 gauge uh, galvanized steel wire. Um, you can get it in a roll at the hardware store. You also can buy it online. Um, it's pretty hardy stuff, but you can still move it while you're working on it. And uh, you can cut it with, uh, you know, anything with a cutter. I just bought these yesterday. Th these were like two bucks at the hardware store. These were the cheapies. I just want to cut the end a little bit. So I'll just uh, take the end off there because it was kind of uh, dented. This is just some strap wire. I have a lot of wire around my shop. So what I'm going to do is, I don't really need this much. I'm going to probably cut some more off. I'm going to probably make it like that that much longer, maybe an inch, inch longer than the stock of the mushroom and then cut off the excess. But I do definitely want um, some of it going um, 
into the into the roof of the uh, or the or the cap, and then I'm just gonna uh, put it at the center and stick it in there, and just slide it up. Now see how it just came out that side like that? That's very common. So what you can do is back it out a little bit, apply some uh, pressure going the other way, and then push it back up. And again, it, ca it came out not center, so I need to adjust, pull back. So that's that's about where I want it. It's 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 fine like that. And then what I'm going to do is push the wire up in, so it's sticking out the top like that. I'm going to just take one of the, my basic uh, wood sculpting tools, and I'm going to score the top of it so that it's roughed up. And by doing that on this end, and doing it on this end, where it's going to join, it will make it a lot more sturdy. Alright, let's get, put it on there like that and then twist it into, uh, into place. Like that. And, uh, and then the next part is going to be creating a little base for the stock. And so what I do is I start off by squeezing the shape of a ball just to get things underway. And then I roll a ball. I roll it long enough to get out all the fissures, cracks, and, you know, stopping marks so it's nice and smooth. Then I just, uh, press it flat by doing it, I, by turning it in my hands like this as I um, press between my thumb and other fingers in my left hand. It makes a, a little round shape, like about that. I'm going to go ahead and score it again here. Score the bottom of the uh, of the stock. Let me show you here. I'm sorry. And and then I'll just uh, join those twisting motion to, to join them and make them bond well like that. Okay. So next to uh, to make the uh, little nodules on the on the cap itself what we do is we have little um, tiny rounds of clay so basically I'm rolling this between my fingers because it's so small but you can see it's just like a round um, dot of clay they can be various sizes there's not really any rules on this but they should be you know fairly small really And I just sit here and roll uh, several of these. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna need about twenty of them. And these are pretty, you know, they're they're really pretty simple to make, but they're there's a lot going on, as you can see, um, and uh, I like to make them, and you know, I like to have various. Like, I have a lot of different things in my shop, so my art shop. So, you know, I mean, I just enjoy making things. So, I'll, I'll sit down and make these things, um, but uh, they they take a bit a bit of time. But when they're when you're done, I mean, there's not many things like this out there. Let me tell you. If you look around, you're not going to find things like this very often. Okay, so then once you've got the balls, um, you just basically put them on the cap, 
and you can do it you know fairly randomly and you can just pour them on and push them into place but like don't like really squish them because then they'll look funny and um, so I just go around I try I try I do try to space them out a little bit so you know <clears throat> it looks nice and I usually just do the lower um, part of the uh, cap I don't go all the way up it just I think it looks better that way I might go up a little ways and usually I do uh, the smaller ones near the you know when I go up I try to do smaller ones up there so I might do one more here yeah so that looks pretty good to me now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my sculpting tool <clears throat> And uh, you can find these sculpting tools in art stores. And uh, if you're having trouble finding them, just send me an email. I can probably lead you in the right direction. I was going to start carrying them, but in my shop, and I may at some point. Um, I have two that I've been using for many years, and they're just so effective, and they're, the designs are really nice. And they still make these. I've seen them on my, mine myself. So I know they're there. Um, but some people don't really know how to search the internet i've found and um and they think they can't see them or they can't find them so if that's the case let me know if you think you'd like to get a set they're they're roughly five bucks a piece maybe a little less or something like that and they're made out of hardwood um, and they have they have a lot of designs but I think the people, when they're searching for them, they're finding uh, packaged ones where you have to buy like ten different ones, and there's there uh, you know, the hardwood ones are kind of expensive. I mean, you know, forty bucks, fifty bucks. That that's expensive, as far as I'm concerned. So um, there we go. Yeah. So uh, now. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, put in, I need to find a uh, paintbrush here. Here we go. So I often use paintbrushes too as tools, and you notice I use the back end a lot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a place here, and I'm going to put in a window. Twisting the back of the brush back and forth as I push. Creates a, creates a nice round hole. The other thing I can do is I can take uh, a tool like this, this other wood sculpting tool here. I'm just going to clean the back end off a little bit because it's got a little bit of uh, self-hardening clay on it because I sculpt in both. Actually, I sculpt in many different things, but this is self-hardening clay on the back of here, and I don't want it to blemish the black paint. So, um... What I'm going to do is just take the take the tool and press in to create the shape of the door like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. And you can you could define the door. You could you know carve in little planks or you know put a doorknob in. Sometimes I just leave it simple like that because I just, uh, I just I don't think I'm going to define it more than that I kind of like it like that and uh, and then um, what I'm going to do is we're going to finish it and uh, so now we're going to do the finish and uh, you know I really like you know they have a lot of different colors just pearlite pigment they have a lot of different colors for this but you know the colors i use the most are the um uh, reflex violet which is basically purple and uh, and then i use the uh, antique bronze with a little bit of gold mixed in and it makes it a little brighter and uh and it's just gorgeous the two the, co the combination is really pretty i think 
I'm going to take uh, my cap here and set it down. I'm going to put the brush into the powder so that I can get some into the cap that way. And then what I'm going to do is just dip it into that and then kind of dab it on the table a little bit so it's not, you know, the powder will just go everywhere if you don't do that. So, um, and then I'll just brush it on the cap and I'm avoiding the, the dots because I'm going to do those in bronze and uh, I think they'll look better if they're, if I start out with them black. So that, that's why I don't want them really, if I get a little purple on there, it's not going to hurt it, but I'm just going around and, and if you, you know, the video, you know, only shows so much on this. I'm telling you what, when you see this in person, it's just mind blowing. I have people contacting me and just thanking me. The company that makes this stuff doesn't seem to know that if you put it on black, it does amazing things. It looks amazing. It really, really does. So you can put it right on like this. And then when you bake the, um, the clay, um, you know, it, uh, it just kind of is embedded into the clay and, and you know, pretty permanent. If you're going to put these things outside, I don't recommend it. I don't say, I say don't put art out, outdoors, but people do what they're going to do. So if you're going to put it outdoors, get some nice spar varnish, probably a uh, latex version or, you know, uh, not the oil version because I think that might break down the, uh, I'm not certain, but I think it might break down the uh, polymer clay. So get the, the latex version. Spar varnish is what they put on boats to seal them from the water. So it's pretty good stuff. And uh, seal them up really good with spar varnish if you're going to put them outdoors. And still, even then, you probably should bring them in in the winter when there's going to be snow, on the, snow and ice on the ground. Because that will really uh, rain havoc down on sculpture. I don't care what it's made out of. Um, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I tell you, from experience, if you put sculpture outdoors, I don't care what it's made of, it will be deteriorated by the weather and winter and that sort of thing. I don't recommend it. So, we got that on there. They got the purple on there. So now I'm going to... I like to put the bronze on with my finger. Just It just looks better. I dip my finger in the bronze and I go like that and then I just um, just touch the uh, the dots and I, you know dipping as I go if you get any on the purple you can either leave it or you can go over it with the brush in purple again just to kind of erase it wow it's really pretty i just i'll tell you what i really dig the finishes the um colors and um, I think, you know, I think bronze and purple are just so gorgeous together. I'm just going to do a little swirl around here like that. And, uh, and now I'm going to do, uh, <clears throat> I have a rag in my lap and I'm wiping off the brush on that. I'm going to take, uh, the brush and dip it in the bronze here and I'm going to go over the house in bronze again if you do it with your finger it looks better um, but you don't have to I mean you can also do it with a brush You know, I'm not really like when I'm holding the holding the sculpture. I'm not really like holding. I'm just resting. It's resting in my hand. There's no pressure on it. I don't have it between my fingers, as you can tell. I mean, my hands are holding it. It's just resting there. 
And the reason why I do that is it's really easy to push it out of shape by holding it and applying pressure to it. I've just basically got it resting in my hand. See? See how it's just resting there? Um, that's really the best way to hold the sculpture when you're sculpting. I guess I'm going to go ahead and do the, the base in bronze as well. And you could put windows on the back, you could put a door on the back if you like. Now I'm going to put baking instructions in the video description, but you should also follow your, um, your packaging instructions. Um, and you may not be using Sculpey 3, I'm going to put instructions for Sculpey 3 in the video description. So. You know, be mindful of that. Your your polymer clay, whatever you're using, might be different. And then I'm going to take, uh, I'm clean off my brush again. And I'm going to take a little bit of purple here and put it in here. So the doors, doorway is not purple. And, uh, you know, by handling it and that sort of thing, it did uh, misshape in the window a little bit. So I just uh, kind of straighten that out a bit. And that is basically what you do. It's really, uh, really pretty. It's really fun. And, I, you know, like I say, you don't think you're going to find a, a, a fairy house like that anywhere. Um... Unless it's in my shop or <laughs> or you make it. Um, so that's basically it. Now, if you like this uh, kind of content, I do a lot of videos along these lines. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, please rate the video. Let me know what you think of it. And, um, and leave me a comment. And if you make something like this, it would be great if you sent me a picture to show me um, what you're doing that would be great you can send it to my email address which is on the about section of my channel page and uh, thank you so much for watching thank you for your support and have a great day